Hello and welcome to another Simplified Astro video and this is going to be part one of a two-part video where I'm going to look at a fantastic feature of Sequence Generator Pro which is the Flats Calibration Wizard and the Flats Wizard. Now we'll look at the Flats Wizard in part two where we'll apply the data that we gain in part one video uh, to a particular sequence and for this video we're going to look at the Flats Calibration Wizard. Now the idea of taking flats is to identify things such as dust motes and other artifacts in the imaging train and also to pick up on vignetting caused by your, your filters and such like and to subtract that data from your lights um, to just remove those from the, the light data during uh, image processing. Now we need to identify for the particular sensor or camera that you're using the full well depth of the, the sensor. Now, for my Starlight Express 694 camera that I'm using uh, for this particular demonstration, it has a full well depth of 65,000-odd ADUs. And we're looking to achieve, for the flats, an ADU level of around a third to a half of that. So it's not an exact science. Um, anywhere between 20 to 30,000 is fine. It needs to be enough that it's going to pick up on the artifacts and, and identify them for subtraction but also not so much that it's washed out and it, it overlooks those so around a third to a half will, will be absolutely fine now you can apply um, the flats calibration wizard to each profile within your equipment profile manager so if you have different cameras and different filters and such like, you can run the calibration wizard for each of those profiles. That's absolutely fine. Um, and it's very good because when you open that um, profile and use that profile, all that calibration data is already in there. So for this particular demonstration, I'm just going to use my Starlight Express camera. Um, and once you've highlighted that in your equipment profile manager, go to your filters, click on the set filters uh, tab, and then if you have a look in the flats data for each particular filter, you'll see at the moment um, for my luminance, which I'm going to use for this um, example, there's no exposure set. So I've got no flats calibration data. I do use um, a flat box. I use a flat flap. So that's adjustable through the, um, the ASCOM driver. Now you will need to do a little bit of experimentation if you're using a flat box like me or if you're using a flat panel or such like you may need to put some um, opaque diffusers over the front to get to a, a lighting level that gives you the right length of exposure for the right ADU level that you're you're looking for. Now that can be adding or taking away or such like. For me, I've done that experimentation and these are the lighting levels that I need to set for each of these filters. And in this box, you can also set the number of flat events that you want to take for uh, any particular filter, which I, I've set to 20. So what we do now, I mean, that you'll see is per filter. I mean, I've, I've reset it for my luminance filter so we can show it in this demonstration, but you'll see um, for my hydrogen alpha filter, it's actually all different levels. They're, they're higher levels because the hydrogen alpha is a, a narrower band filter. So once we got that, we, okay, we now need to connect to our camera. We obviously need to connect to our filter wheel. And in my case here, I have a electronic flat box. So I need to connect to that as well. Then what we do is we go to tools and we're going to run the flats calibration wizard. Now we're going to choose the profile that we want to run this wizard on. As I say, you can pick any profile within your um, equipment profile manager. So I'm going to click my Starlight Express one. Um, it says the continue will open a new sequence. Yes, that's fine. And then it pulls all the information of the filters from that profile. Now, if you just tick each box in turn, it will run through and it will run the calibration wizard for each one of those filters and the binning level within each filter. For this particular demonstration, um, I'm only going to do the luminance filter. I've done all the rest of them anyway. But what you can do, if you don't bin four before, you don't bin three before, you can just tick on the one that you want. Or you can just tick the main box and it will highlight them all. So for this demonstration, I'm going to do all the luminance filters and all the binning levels within it. 
Now the ADU level that I'm looking for, as I touched on previously, is around 25,000. And that's with a tolerance of plus or minus 500, that's fine. Then a minimum exposure um, checkbox here is actually quite handy if you have a mechanical shutter, such as on the Attic 383L, which you can get a shutter shadow. So you may say, well, actually, I need a minimum shutter exposure of, of three seconds to eliminate the shutter shadow. So you just put three seconds in there, and that's the minimum exposure that it will take. So once that's all set, all we do then is click on Start. And what that will do then is that will connect to my um, flat box. It will make sure that the, the flat box is closed. It will then set the brightness level for that particular filter and that particular binning level, and it will start taking images. Now it starts at five seconds, um, and it will then read the ADU level from that particular exposure, and then it will automatically adjust the time. So you'll see now it's gone down to 4.56 seconds. It will take another image and it will then just keep dropping that exposure time until it reaches within the tolerance of the, the ADU level that I'm looking for, which in this case was 25,000. It will have 10 attempts at each event, and after 10 events, uh, it will just say, no, it's failed, and you may then need to look at adding or taking away filters or adjusting the lighting level of your flat box um, to make that possible to achieve uh, that, that particular event. So in this case now, we're, we're nearly there. We're down to 2.59 seconds. It's on attempt seven. Um, I think just one more attempt now, we'll get it there. It's 25,700. So now that's achieved it. So you'll see now in the box there, we've got a tick. 2.51 seconds at 25,274 ADUs. And it then just jumps straight on to now the 2x2 binning level and runs through the whole sequence again. And when it when the binning goes up, it tends to be quicker because there are shorter exposures required. So you'll see that's already finished now, 1.71 seconds. And again, it just now goes on to 3x3 bin and it will carry on through that sequence right the way to the end. Now, if you've got all the filter boxes ticked, it will then just automatically change the filter to the next filter and it will run through the sequence all over again and then keep doing it all the way to the very end. It will highlight any that are failed and you can then go back and do just those filters or that particular binning level on that filter. So once it's finished, all that you then do is click Save and then click OK. You can now close that down. And if we now look in our Equipment Profile Manager and we look at the particular equipment profile that we're working on and we look at the set filters and the data for that, we'll see now that's all populated. That was all zeros before. That has now added in the calibration data from the Flats Calibration Wizard that we've just run. And all that we do now is save the profile and that is the, the flats calibration uh, wizard run. That calibration data is now stored within that particular profile. So when we now run the flats wizard, it will pull that calibration data forward uh, for the flats for that particular event. And that will be, um, we'll run through that in, in video too. So hopefully this first video has been useful and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.